Hello, good evening, what about you? You're very welcome and uh, I'd like to start with a bit of housework. I would like to thank all the kind people online who have uh, tried to help me with the sound issue. It's a very big room, a lot of reverb etc. And uh, I'd like to particularly thank the chap who uh, online suggested, Jake, why don't you move your microphone closer to your mouth? <laughs> he was right, he actually was right. So thank you for that. It reminds me of the time I went to the Mac shop, I love Macintoshes. And I went down to the Mac shop in Belfast and there was a big new iMac out. There was about a 50 inch screen or something and I wanted this and it cost a fortune. Uh, and, and we fell in the shop, God bless him, he tried to, he tried to talk sense to me. And I said, son, I want the big screen. And he said, but why sir, are you doing graphics? I said, no. Are you doing programming? I said, no. He said, why, do you, why not get the smaller screen? The big screen you don't need. I said, son, you don't understand. I want to feel as if I'm there. I want to feel that immersive experience. And he said to me, sir, but I've got an answer. I said, what's that, son? He says, buy the smaller screen yeah, 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 and move your chair closer to the screen. <laughs> he was right too. Okay. Uh, the only thing you've really noticed is the language in these things is quite moderate. And that's a decision by me. And that's the way it'll be. Even this week, which will be the real test. Even this week. Because I don't know who's going to be watching it. So I've decided to keep it very moderate. If, God forbid, there's ever the occasion where it gets a bit florid, I will put a warning up at the start of the video, but that shouldn't happen. Hopefully, this week. Interesting week, I have to say. Um, it started off with Edwin Putz finally announcing his ministerial team after dragging his feet for quite a while. And even the announcement itself, he dragged out. It was over a couple of hours and he gave us a wee bit and another wee bit and another person and another person. It was pretty much like the Eurovision, only with not as talented a cast. So, we finally found out who our first minister is. It's only wee Paul Given. He made a lovely wee speech. Though I do think he stumbled over one name at the very end. See what you think. To doing. I want to pay tribute to those of whom I'm following. Dr Paisley, who founded this party as First Minister, Peter Robinson, and of course Arlene F Foster. Diane Dodds and the other loser, Education Minister Peter Weir, didn't take it well. Didn't take it well at all. They took to social media to air their grievances and even had their tweets retweeted by Geoffrey Donaldson, no less. Emma Little Pengelly even joined the rush for the door, though. When you consider Emma's been on the public purse for 15 years and only won one election, not bad going, Emma. Not bad going. Accusations of intimidation and bullying were denounced by our first minister, Edwin. No, he put the record straight. Let me just nail this thing about being too scared. This party is a party that will reach out to people. And as a leader, I'm not someone who is either scurry or bullying. I want to nail that absolutely and factually. And if anybody wants to bring forward facts, they will be investigated and they will be investigated fairly. I'm not standing for people coming forward with accusations without backing up with facts. Yes, indeed, Edwin says, I'm not scurry or bullying. And you see, when I find out who's been putting these rumours about, they'll know all about it. It was a sad end to a sad career for Arlene Foster, though she tried hard not to show her bitterness, which was hard for Arlene. The outgoing First Minister Arlene Foster chaired her final executive meeting today. Earlier, on a visit to the headquarters of the Orange Order, she said she was sad at the way in which she was taken out of her position as DUP leader. Well, I've loved uh, representing the people of Northern Ireland. It's been the greatest privilege uh, of my life. Uh, and uh, I am, of course, feeling a mixture of emotions at this point in time. Sad uh, that I was taken out of my position in the manner in which I was taken out. Uh, but I have to say, excited by the opportunities. Uh, I'm 50, as everybody famously knows, so now is a good time uh, to have a change, and I'm looking forward to the possibilities that are there. For once, the usual bitter internecine political rivalries were put to a side as everyone joined together in their sympathy for how Arlene had been dispatched. Bye-bye, Arlene. Bye-bye, Arlene. Bye-bye. 
There was much controversy following an anti-protocol march in Porta Down, with many condemning the balaclava marching men. I personally thought it was very admirable of the young men involved to take COVID regulations so seriously and wear face coverings. Others weren't amused. Sinn Féin spoke out against men in balaclavas with their spokesman saying this. Make sure I've got makeup done here, somebody. Uh, listen, careful, Eric. That's not. It's who's doing makeup? I'm sweating like a bollock. Those who wear balaclavas are responsible for their own actions. Those unionist politicians who stood in that crowd are responsible for their own actions. And they all will have to be made responsible to the authorities for their own actions. The politician, of course, they're alluding to is none other than the new UUP leader, Doug Beattie, who was at the parade, but wasn't at the parade. He was observing the parade from down the street from the parade. He explained why he was there himself. I did not see anybody with masks. As it, as it happens, I turned up maybe two to ten minutes late and, and the speech has already started. So all of the parading to the to the event had already been done. Um, so I didn't see anybody uh, with any masks. But I've been quite clear in regards to this that the uh, the sinister element of wearing the balaclavas was, was unnecessary, unwanted and should not have happened. Doug, to be fair to him, uh, has been very vocal in his condemnation of loyalist paramilitaries and uh, is the holder of what some unionists would call liberal views. This uh, led to him having a lot of verbal abuse on the day of the parade. Though the weekend paramilitaries who were abusing him find it rather hard to land a punch on Doug considering he spent 28 years in the army and won a medal serving in Afghanistan, which is a bit different from just wearing a balaclava. The G7 deliberations began in Cornwall with the president flying over from the US, though even before his plane landed, he landed a punch himself at Boris and his handling of not only Brexit, but the Northern Ireland Protocol and the dangers it posed for peace. Boris obviously decided, if he's going to arrive in a plane, I'm going to arrive in a plane. So he uh, flew 250 miles from London into Cornwall, even though part of the G7 logo was, and I read it, to create a greener, more prosperous future. Plane from London to Cornwall. <laughs> Boris lost no opportunity in, in sitting the president down and trying to put his mind at ease around the troubles about the Brexit Northern Ireland Protocol. Can I take it off? Will you take it off? I'll take it off. I'm sorry, protocol, protocol, very sorry. I didn't read the damn thing. I'm sorry. I'm, I'll be honest. I did read it. Uh, yes, I was, I was reading a book, you know, reading a book called Shakespeare. Yes, Shakespeare. <laughs> Quite a few quid. So I went on reading the thing and I'm not angry. Are you angry? Are you angry? You're not angry. And if that eloquent and intelligent summary of what was the issues didn't work and could always fall back on the visual learning techniques of Sammy Wilson. Gammon holding a gammon. You don't see that every day. You know, just when I was beginning to relax and thinking that I had got this week's wee video in the backs, Van Gate happened. He's a hit all over the world, but Van Le Mans can't take the stage tonight in his home city. This afternoon, four concerts for his Save Live performance movement were still advertised as going ahead at the Europa Hotel but within the last hour, they've been called off. In a statement, the hotel's owner, Howard Hastings, claimed he had contacted the executive office two months ago, offering to run the concerts as test events, but didn't get clarity. The current executive restrictions prohibit live music, but the community's minister had seemed to indicate the concerts might be able to go ahead when asked about them in the assembly last week. Howard Hastings said he took that as a go-ahead, but was told yesterday it wasn't. Last night, I made a request to the executive office one last time to consider the status of these shows, he said in a statement, especially given the assurances I'd been given. 
This afternoon, they came back to say that they remain of the view that live music is unlawful at this time. I've never been in the position where I've had to cancel a show at such late notice before. Be it the Sri Lankan government, accused of genocide against the Tamils, or a local multi-millionaire, if they're in difficulties, there's one man to call, Ian Paisley. The MP Ian Paisley was due to go. What sort of a bizarre world? That crowd at Stormont, who told Howard Hastings this was a yes, couldn't run a bath. Little bit of wonder there's disarray tonight. Van Morrison, of course, has been a long-standing opponent of COVID restrictions, even calling those who imposed them in September 2020 fascist bullies. This even though at that time the NHS was almost on its knees, thousands were dying and 10,000 cases had been identified in Northern Ireland. But never mind that, Van had a bigger priority. Hmm. Even though his show was cancelled in the Europa, Van decided to take to the stage and set the record straight. <laughs> Not a good idea. Yes. And as if you viewed with Rolling Stone magazine, I was dangerous. Okay, well, if I can't affect any change in this situation, right, I don't have any power. Or my power is very limited to change this situation. Robin Swan has got all the power. He's keeping us in this over 15 months. All I have to say is, if I don't have any power, my power is like extremely limited, if at all. Robin Swan's got all the power, so I'd say, Robin Swan is very dangerous. 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 What? What? Why? Why? Anybody? Answers? Just send them in. Just when I thought it couldn't get any more surreal, we had the entrance of Ian Paisley, or as he shall from this day forth be known, Van Morrison's brown nose boy. Come on, Junior, you want to do it with me? Come on. Come on. Robin Swan is very, very dangerous. dangerous. Robin Swan is extremely, extremely dangerous. Anyway, Brian, I this. No, 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 no. This stops when we say no. Right? That's when it stops. Thank you, Junior. <laughs> what the what the I really want to curse. I really, really want to curse. Not want to curse, but I really want to curse. What was he thinking? Did he think? Can he think? What was he drinking? Was he thinking on drinking? Or was he drinking on thinking? What was I don't know. Do you understand? I don't know. There was a torrent of abuse all justified and suddenly uh, an explanation came flying from DUP headquarters even though Edwin Putz still says he hasn't seen the video. People have criticised this, saying it wasn't a real apology. But hold on here. Now hold on here. Ian's a bit out of practice with apologies. Now I admit, there was a time not that long ago when he seemed to be making one every other week. But that's a way back. I mean, now, who can ever forget Ian's apologies? They're, they're classics, aren't they? Like, well, my favourite has to be the apology to the House of Commons after he was caught have been taken a luxury family holiday in Sri Lanka, paid by the Sri Lankan governments and lobbying for Sri Lanka, but not registering it in the House of Commons. Ian stood up and said this. I apologise to the House and to colleagues. 
and I understand that subject to the decision of this House, I may from September be subject to a suspension lasting 30 days. I take my duties, Mr Speaker, uh, as a Member of Parliament seriously. I believe I conduct myself with colleagues with integrity, with openness, and that is why I have such remorse about the matter as I believe it goes against the grain of who I am, especially how it is portrayed. Constituency got the opportunity to chuck him out, but Ian won. Ian came through, and he was interviewed after that, and he was asked a simple question: "Ian, is there anything in the pipeline you need to worry about now?" Ian was very clear. Is there anything else in the pipeline that you're worried about coming out that may do for Ian Pearson? No, certainly I'm not. Certainly I'm not. No. There's nothing. Nothing at all. I mean, that was a genuine mistake on my part. I made a mistake and I apologised for it and I was punished for it. You see? Nothing. Nothing to worry about. Nothing. Nothing in the pipeline. Nothing to worry about. Nothing. Oh! Oh! Hold on. Oh! Hold on. There, there was that wee thing. That wee thing. There was another ha- Now that you mentioned it, I didn't- Oh, now that it's mentioned now yet. Yeah, it's coming- Hold on, it's coming back to me. It's coming back. It's coming back to me. There was- I took a luxury family holiday in the Maldives. Right? And I didn't mention that in the register either. But that's it! That, that's- That is it! That's- No, no more! Ian said, no more, that's it, no, no, no. <gasps> there was that one time then when I had to make the groveling apology to the local journalist when I said stuff about him I shouldn't have said. But that's def- that is definitely it. No, Ian, as far as Ian's concerned, that's it, no more, no more. No more, that's it, final, no more. And they close the door, lock it, put a bolt on it. No more embarrassing stuff, nothing, nothing. Ian will never, ever, ever, ever again humiliate himself, his family, his constituents, his political party and all the rest of us who are associated to him only thankfully by accent. That's it. Ian will never ever embarrass us again. (laughs) Till the next time. There'll be a next time. Oh yeah, there's always a next time with Ian. And call me an old fogey, but personally, I preferred Van Morrison's earlier duets. At least we have one mystery answered. A mystery that's gone on for over 50 years. That question that kept coming back. Why does Van Morrison not give interviews? <laughs> we know the reason now, don't we? That's why. So that's why. So I'm not going to jump the bandwagon and do what a lot of people have done and rubbish his music. I'm not doing that because I do think his music is great and I think he's a great musician. I think he's a great musician. As a human being, nah, 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 sorry, nah. So my idea would be that instead of going to see Van live and increasing his already large bank account, Why don't we just donate that money to a local charity where it'll get used for something much, much better? And as for Robin Swan, hmm, another wee idea. Why don't they take the knighthood off Morrison and give it to Swan? Because Swan is the man who has, without doubt, saved innumerable lives with his hard work, his common sense, during this whole pandemic. And he has done something almost unique here. He has gained the admiration of people from right 
across the political divide. As for the accusation, Robin Swan is a very dangerous man. Robin Swan is a dangerous man. Robin Swan is a... Come on, Ian Grandos, come on. Robin Swan is a dangerous man. No, no. We took that, didn't we? We owned that. We took that back. I've never been as proud of social media here as I was over this weekend. Oh, we took that back off them, didn't I? There was a wee hashtag thing on, on Twitter and people put up their own versions of why Robin Swan was such a dangerous man. Uh, here's, a, here's a couple of... I heard Robin Swan does the door in the felons on his own wearing a sash. On you. Don't know your second name. Uh, Robin Swan goes to bed with his phone on 7% battery and doesn't plug it in. Ooh, ooh, dangerous. That's for John, it's from John Keaveney. Next one. Robin Swan leaves his immersion on. Ooh, dangerous man, Robin Swan. That comes from Louise Deary. And my own humble contribution was Robin Swan downs his Sambuca. Without blowing it out. He's a very dangerous man, Robin Swan. And it goes on and on and on, hundreds upon hundreds of them, where, where people put a wee bit of humour where there was madness. Uh, but one man who, who deserves a wee special mention is Aidan Michael Conway. Fair play to you, sir. Because what he did, he utilised an image editing uh, software to show the world just how dangerous Robin Swan is. Because Robin Swan is Rambo. Jump! Push! The strongest so far. Bruce Lee. I'm warning you. Or my favorite, Firestarter. I'm a selfish victim. I'm dead tonight, Doc. Don't be honest, I think our First Minister probably could claim that one for himself. Firestarter. Finally, I'd advise wee Van Morrison to go home, put his head down and relax. Forget your campaign about saving live music. Because we don't need you Van. We never have some. Because in this wee part of the world, music will always find a way. Later. That's life. <laughs> <laughs> That's what all the people say. Yeah. <laughs> You're riding high in April. <laughs> Shut down in May. <laughs>